If you want permission to record this, uh, go ahead and let me know. I'm going to allow you to record it. I'll also be recording it. So if you don't want to record it yourself or you want me to just send you the recording after, just let me know. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be letting people record as we go. Uh, two more of these this week. I mentioned tomorrow, 2 o'clock Eastern time, Franchone Cruz Desern, Michael Hunter will be on at 2 o'clock and 2.30 respectively. And then Wednesday, 1 o'clock Eastern and uh, 1.30 Eastern, Andy Vences and John O'Carroll. So that's uh, what's coming up for us on these, um, on these uh, live chats. So we appreciate you being with us today. And I'm going to get to everyone here, just getting everybody recording permission. Ask for it if you still need that, let me know. And uh, then we'll get to the questions. Um, he's a Brazilian MMA fighter. He's known to, fight fan, known to great fight fans as the phenom for his explosive striking power that helped him secure the UFC light heavyweight championship. Here is the great Vitor Belfort. Hi, Vitor. What's up, man? How are you, Fernando? Great, great to see you uh, guys today. And we're going to uh, start with our first question coming from Dylan Boker. Hey there, Vitor. Appreciate you making some time. How you doing, Dylan? Oh, I'm doing great, man. I was just curious because there was a period of time, a couple of years actually, where you were you know, signed with one championship. It seemed like the Debut was going to come, never ultimately came to fruition, though. Can you provide some clarity on that situation? And as an extension of that, what was the timeline like, you know, getting this boxing bout signed up? So they, they, could, not, they could not close a fight. You know, my agent Lloyd trying to close many fights there. But for some reason, their agenda with my agenda, well, we cannot consolidate it. And <clears throat> our country came to a... a Came to an end, and and, Lord, and Chatra is very good, nice guy, good friend of mine. He said, Victor, we cannot find your fight. You know, this pandemic hit was pretty crazy, and <clears throat> I think it just didn't line. You know, the, the what they're doing with w what I wanted to do, and soon on that day, you know, we clear. I spoke to him, and when kind of the same day, you know, it appeared this opportunity, and actually. The opportunity was amazing. It's, 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 it's just in 2000, I think in 2000, or, yeah, in 2000, year 2000, I was supposed to migrate from boxing. But this, this lawyer had a million dollar contract and they wanted me to go leave MMA to go box. And, and box being my bread and butter, that's being, I brought boxing to UFC. So, I, if I, I put them, the, if you let me I do MMA and boxing together, I would do it. But I have to choose one. And back in the time, you said, no, my, my dream is to make MMA big. And, and here I did, I did that. So, and now it's to kind of migrating to this next phase. I'm pretty excited what Trill is doing. I think they're literally a, a sh shifting how combat sport is migrating. And I believe soon we're going to have the hybration between boxers and MMA guys inside see who is who has the best hands yeah for sure man thanks for the time all right dylan thank you next up is rodrigo tenori oi vitor tudo bem como é que você tá maravilha rodrigo como é que você tá tudo bem também um prazer aqui estar falando com você vitor queria saber primeiramente como foi essa Luta, né? Achar essa luta contra o Real Tarzan, já que você sempre se mostrou interessado né, em se aventurar no boxe, fora do MMA. Você até tinha desafiado o Brock Lesnar anteriormente, o próprio Anderson Silva. Como é que foi encontrar o Tarzan? Bom, a, a luta era para ser com o Holyfield, mas o Holyfield não aceitou, o time dele aceitou. E, e aí eles falaram assim, você quer lutar com esse cara? Esse cara aqui é o único cara que aceitou. A gente tentou diversos caras, nenhum deles quiseram. E, então a gente vai lutar com ele e em agosto eu, eu vou estar em, enfrentando o Holyfield. O combinado é esse. É, você sabe que o meu desejo sempre foi poder fazer o hybration entre os dois esportes. Mas, enfim, o Real Tarzan accepted. E eu não posso dizer não. Vamos lá. Obrigado, Vitor, por, por solucionar essa dúvida. E estamos aqui na torcida com você. Abração. Abraço, irmão. 
Okay, do we have another uh, another question? Anyone with a question? Let me know in the chat. Okay, next up is Gabriel Gonzalez. Hello, Vitor, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, Vitor, we've heard a lot of different uh, opinions about the way the thriller show, the pacing is run. Sometimes fighters, you're waiting a long time in the back because the music is still going on. I wonder, what do you think about that? And just how do you see yourself preparing to possibly wait backstage a while, but stay ready to fight? You know, it's, it's just, it's just, you just the understanding being present in the moment. And I think it's, you know, I come from a different, totally different background. I'm a, I'm a ready guy. You know, it's, it's like, it's like, I, I don't believe in anything else, like just being in a moment and, and you can only control what you can control. So, you know, I, I don't need that much time. It's just following, following what you do and, and do it. And that's it. So it's, it's very simple. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next up is Christian Moreno. Uh, thank you for your time, Victor. It is a very interesting situation we're in because legitimately from the people migrating from MMA to the whole boxing scene, you are the purest of strikers. And if anything, the more legit one. Do you, Does that add an extra pressure to the situation of this transition? Hey, listen, remember, when you're a diamond, you, you, you're born in pressure. You know, you got to deal with pressure. So people see pressure as a, as, as a, uh, I have to, you know, um, I want you, you know. So it's like a, I believe like, you know, I don't need to impress anyone. I come into realization of my life that I'm doing this for my why, not their why. So, you know, that my dream is always being migrating <clears throat> with both sports, see who's the best man with their hands. And I really believe I got, I got one of the, I got, if not the best is one of the best. I bought, I, I was the guy who brought boxing into UFC. You know, that's literally is like what people really love about the phenom is, is the hand speed and agility and the way you strikes different, the, different mechanic wise. So I'm excited to migrate and be able to, we are supposed to fight on that car against Holyfield, but his age and everyone accepted, but he was think he was not ready. But guess I guess we are we are planning to fight in August. You know, I, I, I don't believe nobody wanna see Holyfield fighting his his opponent that he was supposed to fight. So now is the time to literally see who's the best, who's the best striker, you know, is the MMA or, is the, or the boxer. And we know that we 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 had a one guy go boxing with but you know uh, the guy who brought boxing to mma was vito Belfort, and 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 no doubt about it i really believe in my skills as a boxer and um, and i'm excited because you know tarzan was the guy who accepted and he's not even a, a boxer you know you know and i got respect for the guy you know he really stepped up and so uh, i'm in you know it's like I, I never chose opponent and the good thing about you know the difference between boxers and MMA fighters, you know, boxers need 12 weeks. They need this. They need, they, they need too much. They become a diva versus MMA athletes. You cannot become a diva. It, it's, it's like you got to stay ready. You have to study so many martial arts. You have to go through all the things. So, you know, boxing is, is for me, is much easier, much easier on your body, much more fun. I think is much more glamour and is much more skillful you got to be very skillful you know so you got to be willing to to looking for the details you know i study biomechanics so i, I love just study muhammad ali you know see the shuffle see how he how he box and how he grab and how he grabbed the guy and you see joe fraser how he moves his head how creating the cross guard so it's many ways and and so i have to study all martial arts and literally creating my own one to I call the boxing martial arts. I have to learn how to strike him, you know, combining other martial arts together, you know, because we could get taken down, we, we, we could get kicked. So, and it's it's all about anticipation. It's, it's similar to a quarterback, you know, who is the best quarterback? Is the guy who has accuracy, who can anticipate, and who can lead. So, it, it, these three things is very important for. 
for a, a, a striker. You know, I have to anticipate, I have to have accuracy, and I have to be a leader, leader of yourself, being in the moment. And that's what uh, I prepare my whole life. And right now at, at 44, what a joy to be able to be part of Thriller. It's an amazing, it's entertaining, it is sport, and it's, it's this new way of presenting a product for these thousands of millions of fans. You know, it's not boring. You, 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 can, you can hit generations. We can have in the same room uh, a younger kid, uh, six years old. They never saw the phenom. And, and his father, who was a big fan of the phenom, is there. You're going to watch this man. You're going to watch this man. And then you have the grandfather who's also follow. So it's, it's like congratulations for all the producers, you know, Ryan Kavanaugh and, and the whole team who's putting that vision. And I believe we are coming to bring the baddest man of both sport to collide in August, me and versus Holyfield. That is my dream fight. And I believe that's your dream fight as well. But you know, for right now, I'm Tarzan going to come to the jungle. You know, I'm, I'm not a domesticated animal. You cannot domesticate a, a big lion. So it's going to be fun. You know, it's, it's just very courageous on his part. He's not picking fights like the other two brothers, the big, two big clowns of history, you know, I call, they are Disney's boy, you know, they are not fighters. Tarzan is a fighter. He's fighting a fighter for real. He's not picking up opponents. You know, it's, it's, I respect a lot of the guy. Well, kudos to great and great moment. And thank you for your answer. Christian, thank you. Uh, next up is Damon Martin. Hey, Vito. What's up, Damon? How are you? Hey, Vitor, thank you so much. Uh, we have seen a, a lot lately, a, a lot of MMA guys crossing over to boxing or wanting to cross over to boxing. Uh, ben Askren tried it. Uh, Tyron Woodley's doing it in August. Uh, what do you make of, of this current trend? Is it just about the payday? Have you been impressed by anybody? Uh, just kind of curious your thoughts on this current trend we're seeing. I just think they're, they're, they're the worst representation of MMA. This guy sucks. That's the word. Remember, man, you know, not because I'm a, I'm a UFC fighter, I can go and fight karate. You know, it's like, it's not because you can, uh, you're a great baseball, baseball player, you can throw a baseball, you can throw a football. So remember, you, it's a skill they have to develop through the years. So these guys that you just mentioned, you know, I can fight all of them in one night. You put them, I'll put them out. You know, I believe like they, they cannot even survive two rounds with me. So these MMA, these MMA athletes that are representing us in boxing. So I, I really think it's, it's like, a, it's depending on your why. So you got to know your why. What's the purpose of doing things? I'm not doing things because I'm getting paid. You know, getting paid, you know, we all professional. But, you know, I believe you have to transform your passion into profit. And I think these guys, they are, they are, they're clowns. You know, they, they talk, you know, they, they don't do the work. And, and now they, they think they can jump in and, oh, I'm going to make money. Who cares? You know, like, it's a shame. So you have to be able to, uh, to do the work. So I've been boxing my whole life. I know I, I, do the, I did the trials. I, I made my, the Brazilian team, but I couldn't go because I got an injury. So I didn't go to the Olympics. I almost became professional. I, I trained in Cuba in 1998 with Felix Savon, you know, Jaringo Diao. So I, I, re I really training with with the best boxers trainers all my whole life and my dream is being able to do both and i i couldn't you know william morrison when i was 20 20 years old they made a uh, they made a uh, an encounter with me and they they convinced my mom to surprise me took me to my hotel come outside of the door was muhammad ali you know so we they, they made a lunch so they want to convince me to sign, uh, become a professional boxer. And when Lorenzo Fertitta was not owner of the UFC, was, was, was the prior owner. And it was Milovic. Milovic was the name of the, the private owner. So prior owner. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll box, but I have to do both. And they had my coach, Al Stanky, there with my mom and the lawyer who made the introduction. And I looked to the contract and it was millions of dollars of contract, but I said, no. And, but, you know, it was a very tricky 
tricky contract. And I said, no, if you don't have the money here, because when they say, say, where's the money? Show me the money. They say, no, you're going to get paid. This is how it works. And I said, no. So you, if I cannot do what I love, I'm, I'm not doing this for money. I used to live in a gym. So you, if I was doing for money, I would get the money out there. So I said, my dream is always to do both. And I wanted to make MMA become a huge sport. And today, MMA is the, if it's not bigger than boxing, it's right there. And I believe the, the real, the guy that really rep, can represent MMA and boxing, it, it's, it's I'm, I'm there. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm between, if you choose 10 guys, I'm right down between the three best guys. So I really, it's time to come and I'm excited to start my journey. Thank you, Vitor. All right. Thanks, Damon. We have a question from Stuart from Grassroots Boxing. He's having some mic issues. He's in the room, though. Stuart asks, what still drives you to get up in the morning and go training still? I have three amazing kids. My son is the number one quarterback in the, in the nation. My daughter is one of the, the best uh, outside hitter. My other daughter, Kiara, is the best gymnast in the East Coast. So I, I'm driven. This, this house is driven by this, by purpose. When you find your purpose, when you know your why, you can go and achieve anything you want. But re and, and remember, the problem is like people are doing for the money, for the fame. And, and that's two things that literally is the most devastating. And you can see in, in rock stars, most of them become overdosed. They die or actors, Hollywood, you know, they become crazy because they have too much money and too much power and too much fame. So this can mess with your brain. And they have all this, I don't know the right word to say, but that's why they kiss at people that kissing your ass they all the time, you know, carrying your luggage, they doing all the stuff. You know, I call the, these guys like the ball suckers. You know, that's that's the word we use in Brazil. So I was trying to avoid these people. I don't want to, I want to want them around. I want my team. I really want, you know, my team with me and, and execute. We like to execute. That's it. And I have a dream. You know, my, if my family is welcome, we go. If my family is not welcome, I'm out. All right. Next up is Brendan Tobin. Hey, Vitor, thanks for doing this. Um, you spoke a little bit about having respect for Tarzan for taking the fight. I'm curious, what did you know about him when they brought this opponent to you because he's not a guy with experience? And was there any part of you that didn't want to do it because it's kind of looked at maybe as a no-win situation for a guy with as much experience as you taking on a guy who's new to, to, a, to combat sports? So what did you know about him and, and what made you say yes to this particular opponent? Brandon, in this world, we have three type of people. Stay with me. Number one, people, they make things happen. Number two, people that watch things happen. Number three, people, they don't know what's happening. I'm right there on the number one. I make things happen. You know, and, and you cannot control life. It's supposed to be Holyfield. But Holyfield say no. And we are doing it in August. And they present TARS and I say yes. Why yes? Because everything is a challenge. It's, it's a, it's a win-win situation for him. But for me, it's a win-win situation. I go out there, you know, I entertain the public. It's been three years I don't step. It's been, I signed a contract with one championship. I could not fight for two years, you know, and, and the pandemic hit. It, people look for excuses. I look for solution. You know, I have an amazing agent, Lloyd. I have an amazing family, my wife and my three kids. I have amazing friends. They're not very popular, but they tell me the truth. So stick with your, stick with what you know. Don't invest in what you don't know. I see a lot of people losing a lot of money in cryptocurrency and in, in, in stock market because they do it. They do not know. They just heard and they go to Robin Hood and, and do what, what they don't know. So I'm doing something that I know. And how I can say no for our, uh, this kid is a very respectful kid. You know, like, you know, he, he knows what he's coming to it, you know, but he's not looking for an easy fight. He said, yes, one of the, the best, the most knockout artists in the UFC history until today. He said yes. So I, I have respect for the kid. He is not like the other two clowns. Hey man, it's a shame. You see these YouTubers popular, you know, nice hair and all that. This kid loves animals. This kid, you know, very respectful, coming from nothing, you know, and he respect fighters. And, and I mean, he's stepping himself with one of the best, you know, but you know, I'm not the domesticating cub, man. So it's gonna be a fight, yes, but you know, I have respect and I say, I say yes. Why not? 
Holyfield right. we, we, on August and we have Holyfield. Let's let's cross over. It's time for you know making fights that fans love it, but also not just fight. It's the whole thing, the whole experience. Triller is bringing that thing that called the experience. You cannot you cannot see that in all the events. That that's what's amazing. Great, thank you, Brendan. Next up is Rodrigo Tanuri. Vitor, voltei aqui falar contigo. É, eu, que, eu queria saber de você, ontem aconteceu justamente aquela luta entre o Logan Paul e o Floyd Mayweather. Queria saber primeiro o que, que você achou desse combate e outra, se ainda te interessa enfrentar um dos irmãos no boxe, já que agora é a sua nova empreitada. Eu enfrento os dois na mesma noite. Eu, eu, eu faço melhor que o Mayweather. Boto os dois na mesma noite, um round vem um, quando cansar traz o outro. Eu desafio, I challenge, thriller, bring the two brothers in the same night, I'll fight both guys. One round come one guy, they got tired, bring the other guy. I'll put them out quickly. Before the, the eight round, they're all out, they're both out. Why? We need to entertain. If we're gonna entertain, let's do it real. Let's do it for real. And I mean, Floyd Mayweather is like a 150 pounds. I didn't see the fight, I don't, my time is very valuable. Meu tempo é muito valioso. Eu não vou perder meu tempo. I'm, I'm in training camp. I had only two weeks training camp. So time to work. Time to work. I'm not losing my time. What I watch, what I hear, what I see. So it's muito important. Então, acho que foi o, o, o Floyd Mayweather me falaram que ele só agarrava o Floyd Mayweather. Eu não vi a luta, então não posso nem falar. Mas eu boto esses caras para a lona rápido. Rápido, assim. Ó. Primeiro round, Vitor? Não sei, mas... Entre, entre o primeiro até o sexto, os dois estão para fora. Os dois não sobrevivem esses rounds comigo. Os dois. Estou falando de um, não. Dos dois. Obrigado, Vitor. Vou deixar aí o pessoal aí te entrevistar também. Valeu. Valeu. Rodrigo, thank you. And now Dylan Boker. Hey there, Vitor. I was just curious here because I was noticing in your pro boxing debut there in April 2006, you were still also concurrently competing with Pride Fighting Championships, which had a level of you know, pageantry and grandeur and everything like that. As you're getting ready for this, you know, sophomore boxing effort and you're competing under the Triller umbrella, which also is a similar entertainment minded kind of idea. Like, does it have similar, I guess, hallmarks to back at that prior point in your career? Does it feel like an altogether new period in your career? I feel truly it's just, it's just in the next level. I think they literally are, are making this entertaining. And I, I used to love that time in Japan. It's totally entertaining. You know, people have to understand this, Dylan. If you're not entertaining, you cannot make money. And if you don't make money, you cannot hire people. So the problem with fighters, they need to understand that before they become a fighter, they're entertainers. You can only, so if you want to do a sport, you know, you got to look for ATP, you know, basketball, NFL, NBA. So they have, so when you talk about boxing, MMA, I understood in a later career, that is all about you become your own promoter. You have to become your own promoter and you have to accept it, how people consume products. And, and, and it's funny how I, I used to think, why people don't like this? People have to consume this. They cannot consume this. No, you cannot make obligate people to buy your product. So your job is to create a product and make them want your product. So that's called, you know, become an entrepreneur. And I think Trill is just changing the game. He's literally putting everybody in the same room. They putting the family together. You know, all generation are together and watching and, and watching amazing artists, watching amazing athletes from different sports, from different way of life. And and I mean, literally, you know, uh, you know, changing what was to be normal. And now it, it's just it's just amazing. I'm I'm so excited. I saw the first one when Tyson fought was marvelous, you know, the production, the whole thing, you know, I'm, I'm very excited, especially on the Marlins arena, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be insane. I'm, I'm so excited. Thanks so much for the insights, man. All right. Thank you, Dylan. And that concludes the portion of our press event with Vitor. Vitor, thank you very much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next week. Let's go. All right. Bye guys. Thank you very much. Take care. All right. We'll let Vitor go. And then in a, couple of minutes uh we're gonna have uh